What's up guys? Welcome to the Computer Science Education Channel. My name is Sam and today we're going to be doing a leak code problem called group anagrams. Um, this is going to be a leak code medium problem. Um, and as you can see here, uh, we can go down to see what companies ask this problem and we can see that it's Amazon, Facebook, Uber, and it's one of the most frequently asked questions um, according to leak code. Um, so I'm going to go through um, kind of just the steps that I take when I get an interview question um, and then just yeah, kind of go step by step and explain my thought process and um, yeah, and then hopefully solve the problem in an optimal manner. So the first step here is to actually fully understand the problem before you start solving it. Um, so what the problem is, is given an array of strings, group anagram anagrams together. Um, so as we can see on the input here, we get a list of strings and the output is a list of lists which are grouped together. Um, so I guess one question that you could ask here is, we don't, obviously we don't have an interviewer, uh, but you could ask, you know, can you give me a definition of an anagram? Um, so if we go over to Google, um, we can see that, okay, an anagram is a word, phrase, or name formed by rearranging the letters of another, such as cinema formed from Iceman. Um, so here we have two different words, but they're uh, put together using the same, uh, the same characters and the same frequency of characters. So if we go over back to the problem, uh, we can see that eight, eat, and T are all formed with the letters A, T, and E. And then same with Nat and Tan, and then Bat is the only uh, string in here that has these three letters B, A, and T. Um, so now that we have a good understanding of the problem, um, the next step is to actually kind of diagram it out and see how you would actually solve it, um, not even using any code or pseudocode, just kind of like, you know, how you could solve the problem. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. So if I go over and copy the input, So, you know, how can we approach this problem? So we know that for two anagrams, um, they have the same letters, right? So what we could do is we could actually sort both of the strings. And if they're anagrams of each other, they're actually going to be identical strings, right? So let's take the first two letters here, or the first two strings here. Um, we have E and we also have T. So if we sort both of these, we're going to get A, E, T, and then we're also going to get A, E, and T. Um, so that, that's really kind of like the trick to the problem here. Um, you're going to want to go through and you're going to want to sort the string, and then we're going to group the sorted strings together. Um, so how can we do that? Uh, what we can do is we can use a hash map where the sorted string maps to a list of the original strings. Um, so how would this work here? So let's go through the first, uh, let's just go through an example here. Um, if we go through eat, uh, the first thing we can do is we can sort it and we get A-E-T. And we can have that map to a list um, with the original string in it. So we can have uh, eat in here. Then we go to T, we sort that, we see that it's also A-E-T. Then we go ahead and throw that into our list. Um, then we get to tan, we see that sorted, that's going to be A-N-T, that's not in our map. So we go ahead and create a new entry, and we have ant map to tan. Then we get to eight, uh, we go ahead and sort that, that's going to be A-E-T, and we already have that in our, uh, our map, so we go ahead and add that. Then we get to nat, we sort that, that's going to be A-N-T, then we go ahead and map uh, go ahead and put nat into our list. And then finally we get to bat. We sort that. That's going to be abt. That's not in our map. So we go ahead and have abt map to bat. All right, cool. So now we have our map completed. Um, but what we want to return here is going to be a list of lists. Um, so what we can do here is we can just... Um, we can iterate through the hash map and then we can just put each value um, into our results list. Um, so 
yeah, so basically it'll be a list and then it'll have, for this case, it'll have three lists in here with the, um, the appropriate strings. All right, cool. So now that we kind of, you know, have a basic algorithm for what we're doing, uh, we want to actually go ahead and write like a high level algorithm here. Uh, it doesn't have to be like necessarily, you know, pseudocode, but it could just be like, you know, the steps that you, that we just went over now. Um, so the first thing we were, we are going to do is we're going to loop through each string in the input. And then for each string, we're going to go ahead and sort the string. Uh, we're going to insert into the hash map. Uh, next step, we're going to iterate through the hash map and put each list, or I guess it would be the key that points to the value. We're going to go ahead and put each value in our some kind of result array that we have. And then finally, we're going to return the result array. Cool, so now we have our general algorithm here and notice how we haven't written a line of code here. Um, I see so many times in interviews that I watch and I even used to do this myself is people get the problem and they just like jump straight into the code and it's like, you know, you're coding without really even knowing what you're gonna do. The interviewer doesn't really know what you're doing um, and it's just like, a, it's a big red flag. Um, so don't do that. Um, but now at this point you would say, okay, you know, you ask your interviewer, hey, is it cool if I go ahead and code this up now? And then if they say, yeah, then we're gonna jump into the code. Cool. So the first thing we need is, uh, we know we're returning a list of lists. So we're gonna have to create uh, some kind of result list here. And then we'll just call it result. And then at the bottom here, we're gonna, I'm just gonna write this before I forget. Cool. So the other thing that we need is also a map, right? So this map is going to be a string and it's going to point to a list of strings. And then we'll just call it map and it's gonna be a new hash map. All right, cool. So now we, basically just follow the steps that we wrote down here, right? Uh, so we're gonna loop through each string. So we'll just do uh, for string S in SDRs. We'll just call it uh, SDR. Um, and then what are we gonna do? We're gonna first sort the string, right? Um, so in Java, the strings are immutable. So what we actually have to do first is convert it to a char array and then sort the char array and then turn it back into a string. So we can have you know, just like, we'll just call it like temp array equals str to char array. And then we can use arrays.sort to sort it lexicographically. Um, and then finally we can turn it back into a string. So we'll just call it sorted string. And then the constructor of the string, you can actually pass in a char array, which will turn it into a string. Cool, so now we have the sorted string. Um, so the next step is to insert it into the hash map. So first thing we wanna do is we want to uh, check if it exists in our hash map. So we can do if map.contains key uh, sorted string, then we want to, um, let's see, we want to just insert it, right? So we do map.get sorted string dots so we're getting the array list right now so what we want to do is we want to just do an add and we want to add the original string right not the sorted version um, otherwise if it's not in our map we want to first create the new list right so we'll just call it uh, temp list equals new array list we're going to go and ha go ahead and add our string there so we'll do temp list add and we're gonna go ahead and add the SDR. And then finally, we want to map.put sorted string pointing to the temp list. All right, cool. So now, our, now we'll go to the next step. Um, so we want to iterate through the hash map. 
And uh, so the, the syntax for this in Java is a little strange. Um, so uh, if you're doing like a phone interview, sometimes they might let you look it up, but sometimes maybe you might just need to memorize it. Um, so we're gonna do, and there's several ways to uh, iterate through a hash map. I'm just gonna use a simple for loop. So you can do map entry, and then you're gonna have the, um, whatever the map values are. So it's a string that points to a list of strings, and then we'll just call it entry, and it's gonna be map.entry set. That's what we're iterating over. Um, and what do we wanna do here? We just simply wanna do result.add entry, and what we wanna do is we want to get the value. And then we already are returning the result array. So let's go ahead and run that. And we got it. Uh, so as you can see here, on um, LeetCode, it tells you the runtime and the memory usage. Um, so if you can see, our memory usage is 98.34. So it's, you know, almost as good as you can get. Um, and our runtime here is 77.5%, which uh, is pretty good. Um, now there is one optimization that we can make here. Um, it's not gonna improve really like the time complexity or the space complexity, which I'll go over at the end. Um, but notice how we're doing this for loop here and then we're also looping through the uh, hash map. Uh, we actually don't need to do this. Um, what we can do here is actually, we can uh, go ahead and comment that out. And what we can do here is actually after we create this uh, template, we do add it to our map, but we could actually add it to our result array at this point here. And what this is going to do is as we're at, you know, we go through the, uh, the strings and we're adding it to the hash map, the list in the hash map, it's actually going to be pointing or adding it to the result array list as well, because they're really just two pointers that are pointing to the same list. So if we go ahead and run that, we see that we have a 99% runtime and a 97% memory usage, which is basically optimal. Um, so what is the run time, run and runtime and space complexity of this algorithm? So as we see here, we have this for loop. So we're going through every, um, every string in our input, right? So our time complexity is big O. So we have N, right? For each, uh, string that we're going over. But then notice how in here, we're also sorting each string. And the runtime for that is gonna be, if we say that there are K letters, uh, the best that we can do is gonna be K log K. So our time complexity is gonna be N times K log K. And then our space complexity. So let's see here. So we are using the hash map here, which is going to be, as we saw down here, it's gonna be the size of the uh, input string here, or I'm sorry, the input array. Um, and we're not really using any other, we are using extra space, like when we're sorting the array, but it's all gonna be dominated by that map that we have that has all the strings in it. So our space complexity is gonna be N. Um, so yeah, that, that uh, concludes this problem here. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Um, make sure like this process that Make sure that you use this process and you don't just like jump into the code. I find like doing these steps really works well for me. Um, so yeah, um, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, go ahead and like, please subscribe and um, see you guys next time.